The United States of America, the land of the free, the land of opportunity, and the melting pot of the world. A country built on immigrants and a nation who has birthed some of the greatest beings to ever step foot on Earth. Whilst here on Earth, we start our story in the quiet suburbs of Pittsburgh, 1970 to be exact. James Michael Furyk's ancestry tree consists of Czech and Polish on his mother's side and Ukrainian and Hungarian on his father's side. So from birth was blessed with the blood of four strong nations. His father, Mike, was an assistant and head pro at golf courses throughout Pennsylvania. It was this early introduction into golf that saw Jim want to follow in the footsteps of his father. To this day, Mike is the only person who has coached Jim and takes great pride in keeping the famous swing we all know and love out of the hands of other coaches. Back in the day, if you didn't have the textbook swing, you would just accept you couldn't play golf and move on to another sport that fit your anatomy. But Jim's father was one of the first to understand looks aren't everything and you can build something great around somebody's mobility. From the get-go, Jim's swing was built around his lack of mobility in his hips. On his backswing, his hips didn't turn enough and on his downswing, they turned too much, causing a huge loop at the top of his swing. Any other coach would have tried to change this early on, but Mike knew his son, and trusted the process. Through high school, the pair continued their vision of success, proving all the naysayers wrong. See, people weren't going to tell a young teenager with a passion for golf, his swing looked a bit odd, fearing they'd kill a kid's dreams. But Mike took the full brunt of it, constantly bombarded with people saying they could help his son. Mike didn't need to keep defending his way of teaching though for long, as Jim's game really started to take shape and big competitions started being won. Jim won the state championship and things were about to be elevated to a new level. State champion is no fluke, and colleges were now becoming increasingly interested in this new prospect. Watching that day was a coach who approached Mike and asked if he could take him and his wife to dinner. Whilst at dinner, the coach said, I can't wait to get Jim down to our school so I can change that swing. Mike replied, Coach, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. He goes, Oh, you know it needs to be changed too. And he said, No, I don't ever want it to be changed. But you eliminated yourself from the recruiting process and I just wanted to thank you for doing that and as well for dinner. He won't be coming your way. Another coach, Mike Holder, then Oklahoma State's legendary men's golf head coach and now the school's athletic director, commented that his son's swing wouldn't hold up. Furyk would eventually enroll into the University of Arizona, where he became an All-American twice and led the Wildcats to their first and only NCAA title in 1992. So even after a successful high school and college career, and proving everyone wrong, there were still people who wanted one last shot of getting their opinion right. Taking on the challenge, Jim turned pro in 1992, again feeling like he had a point to prove. He started out on the Nike development tour, like most golfers at that time, fresh out of college and straight into the depths of professional golf. It was now time to truly find out if his swing could hold up. After a year of getting comfy, Furyk got his first professional win at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Classic in 1993. This was the start of a professional career that would inspire consistency and leave all doubt in the shadows. He started his PGA Tour career in 1994 and once again after a year of settling in, found himself in the winner's circle. It was the Las Vegas Invitational that Jim seemed to take a fancy to, as his first four wins on tour saw him win it three times in 1995, 1998 and 1999. He did however mix it up a little in 1996 when he won the United Airlines Hawaiian Open. So with his name very much cemented on tour, everybody knew who he was and wanted a glimpse of this fascinating new swing. The critics did come out of the woodwork though, and the comedians wanted another laugh. David Ferretti described Furyk's swing as an octopus falling out of a tree. And Gary McCord said it evokes the image of a one-armed golfer using an axe to kill a snake in a telephone booth. Laughs aside though, Jim was a four-time PGA Tour winner in a very short time, and the harmless banter wasn't going to start affecting him now. He strengthened his team with Tiger Woods' ex-caddy, Mike Fluff Cowan, who was Tiger's caddy for the first two years as a professional. From here, real domination was ignited and a streak of untouchable form was produced. Between 1998 and 2003, Furyk won at least one tournament. At the time, this was the second best streak of winning seasons behind Tiger Woods and this streak saw him enter the official world golf rankings for the first time. 
Furyk's biggest win in that time frame and to date came on June 15th, 2003, when he tied the record for the lowest 72 hole score in US Open history to win his first and only major championship. He played the course on Monday at Olympia Field, the fourth time the US Open had been at this course. He took one look at his dad and said, I love it here. Despite loving the course, he didn't get off to the greatest starts. He shot two over par on his first front nine, but he knew anything around even par at the US Open is a good score. He relaxed on the back nine, shooting five under, and suddenly Furyk was in contention after the first round. Round two was a complete blur for Jim, as he completely blacked out. He hit 17 out of 18 greens in regulation that day, and topped the leaderboard. Day three, he was battling it out with the big Fiji, as both went toe to toe on an extremely dried out golf course. His long birdie putt on 10 gave Jim the feeling that this might be his week. And when he equaled the 54 hole record on 18 with another lengthy putt, Jim was in prime position. With a three shot lead going into Sunday, Jim was trying to give his father the greatest Father's Day gift of all time. With the course firmer and faster, Jim knew even par was the score. And if he could achieve that score, the competition was his. A clutch par at the second gave him the confidence he needed and was a huge boost early on. He followed that with a slippery one that came to a halt before gravity did its job. And at the turn, Jim was one under par and cruising his way to victory. Player after player, they all started to slip, but Jim hung on in there with a round of 72, which was matched by his playing partner and closest competitor, meaning he had done enough and was now a major champion. Being a father for the first time, and with his father there, nothing could ever top that Sunday. The following year after one of his greatest seasons of his life, turned out to be one of his worst. Jim was struck with injury in 2004, and only managed to play in 14 events after missing three months due to surgery to repair cartilage damage in his wrist. That year he missed six cuts and his highest finish was tied sixth, which caused him to fall out of the top 100 on the money list. A minor blip in a career that had only seen an uphill trajectory, but Jim wasn't at the summit just yet. He returned to good form in 2005 and regained his top 10 ranking, winning a PGA Tour event in that year and two in 2006. In the 2006 season, he finished a career-high second on the money list and won the Varden Trophy for the first time. He had 13 top 10 finishes, including nine top threes, four second place finishes and two victories. He also won the Ned Bank Challenge in 2005 and then defended it in 2006. Mr. Consistent was being renamed the King of Defending as he achieved yet another championship defence in 2007. In 2006, he won the Canadian Open and then again in 2007, seeing off Vijay Singh by one shot. So at the age of 37 and perhaps on the other side of his prime, Jim's form dipped. For a man who's used to being on top of the podium at least once a year, Furyk didn't manage a win for two years. At first glance, it seems ugly, but Jim was still slaying on the course. In 08, he managed 23 out of 26 cuts, finishing top 10 in nine of those, and top 25 in 13, as well as a runner-up and fifth in the FedEx Cup. 09 was no different. In fact, it was better. The sword was drawn and Furyk sliced through 21 out of 23 cuts, making 14 top 25s, 11 top 10s, two of them being runner-ups, and finishing fourth on the FedEx Cup. So although no wins, the form was progressive, and if he was to improve again, there was only one path he was heading down. Just four tournaments into the 2010 season, Jim had broken his duck at the Transitions Championship. With a three-shot lead heading into the final round, Jim jumped on a birdie train and proceeded to dominate and shrugged off a late surge from KJ Choi. With the pressure now off, three competitions later, he was at it again, this time at the Verizon Heritage Championship. Davis, an Englishman who has never won on the PGA Tour, used a birdie on the 72nd hole to force a playoff. However, Davis' approach rolled off the green of the lighthouse hole and into some rocks. As Davis attempted to chip on, his wedge moved a loose reed in the marshy area. Davis quickly called a rules official, who after calling colleagues to check the replay, confirmed the penalty. I thought I saw a movement, Davis said, it's a disappointment. Davis conceded to Furyk before the world's sixth rank player put it out. For the rest of the season in Jim's most successful year, from 21 events, Jim had seven top 10s, 13 top 25s, and still had enough to take down the tour championship. 
Rounds of 67, 65, 70 and 70 beat England's Luke Donald by one stroke. The win saw him take home a whopping $10 million on top of a successful year on the PGA Tour that single-handedly earned him $5 million. His accomplishments in 2010 won him the PGA Player of the Year and the PGA Tour Players Player of the Year for the first time. It seemed Furyk had reached another career peak and nobody was expecting him to improve from here. Since 2012, Furyk has come close on several occasions to winning more titles. At the 2012 US Open, Furyk led after 54 holes and was still the leader deep into the final day before snap-hooking his drive into the trees at 16th, which led to a bogey and was followed by another at the 18th. At a 2012 WGC Bridgestone Invitational, Furyk led after the first three rounds and looked set to win the championship as he held on to a one-stroke lead going into the final round, but a double bogey cost him the title to Keegan Bradley. At a 2013 PGA Championship, Furyk led by one stroke going into the final day over Jason Duffner, but this time his lead was overturned on the front nine and he was unable to reduce the deficit as Duffner won by two strokes. So with some good golf being played, but the thought of a win seeming in increasingly harder. Nobody was expecting a win from Jim as much nowadays, and they definitely weren't expecting records to be broke. Firing a sub-60 round in any PJ Tour event is a notable achievement. Doing it in a FedEx Cup playoff, however, is next level. That's what Jim Furyk did in the second round of the 2013 BMW Championship at Conway Farms Golf Course outside of Chicago. Furyk started the day on the back nine, where he did something that only the most talented players in the world are capable of pulling off if they were playing a video game. He went birdie, 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 pa, birdie, eagle, pa, birdie, birdie, on his way to an 8 under 28 before making the turn back to hole number one. His pace didn't slow down there though, as he knocked down three birdies on the next four holes to get to 11 under par with five to play. As whispers of a sub 60 began, however, he slipped up and bogeyed number five. After a par on number six, Furyk calmly drilled his 11-foot putt on number 7 to bring him back to 11-under with two holes remaining. He parred the par 5 number 8, meaning that he needed to birdie the final hole for history. Naturally, he stuck his approach shot within a few feet like it was just another ordinary day of golf, sank the putt and became the sixth person ever to do so, and the first with a bogey on the card. The feat was produced 40 years after Al Geiberger first achieved this in 1977. All that stood out from this incredible achievement was the fact that he possibly could have gone lower. In 2015, five years after his standout season, Jim got back to winning ways with a win at the RBC Heritage. This would be his last win on the PJ Tour, but his game was definitely still in great shape. At the age of 46 and the seniors tour knocking on the door, Jim was starting to slow down. Family was more important, he'd achieved everything he wanted in the sport, and frankly, what else could he have that money couldn't buy? Well. On August 7th, 2016, Jim Michael Furyk became the first ever player to shoot two sub-60 rounds, become the first person ever to break 59, and rightfully claim the moniker Mr. 58. 613,000 rounds of golf on the PGA Tour, and Jim's was the lowest. A score that might never be beaten. 18 greens in regulation, 10 putts on the front nine, and 11 under through 12, including seven birdies in a row. That would pretty much top off a career on the PGA Tour. 450 weeks spent inside the world top 10, 636 events played, with 512 cuts made, 17 wins, 31 runner-ups, 17 third places, and 109 top fives, as well as 70 million in earnings made. Not to mention his participation in Ryder Cups and President's Cups from 1997 to 2014, being on seven winning teams and captaining in 2018. Upon turning 50, Jim begins a new journey now on the seniors tour as he begins to slow down and start to enjoy his golf again. He won his first two events on the new tour and also won the seniors US Open, 18 years after he achieved his first and only major. So in a world of advancing technology, Jim stuck to his game. He was never the longest and was never the most exciting, but Furyk was definitely one of the greats of the game. He did it his way and his way worked, regardless of what he had heard all of his life. Statistically, he was one of the most consistent golfers of all time and opened up a new door for swings that didn't quite come from the textbook. Jim will be missed on the PGA Tour, but Mr. 58 will always live on in the history books, and no doubt will he be entered into the World Golf Hall of Fame.